Well, hello, Kevin Paffrath. Thank you so <laughs> yes. much for joining us. We appreciate Absolutely, it. my pleasure. My name is Garth Stapley. I'm the opinion editor in Modesto. Uh, this is uh, Tad Weber here joining uh, a colleague from uh, Fresno that's joining us. If you Perfect. have connections to Modesto, Fresno, Sacramento, Merced, or San Luis Obispo, now would be the time to mention them. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, that's awesome. Well, beyond uh, a lot of rallies that we've done out in your area uh, and, and the supporters I have uh, from social media or the campaign, uh, I don't have uh, direct connections to, to individuals that I can name drop. Okay. No, no rental properties up here in this area or no, all of my properties are in Ventura County. I keep them within 30 minutes of where I live just because I, otherwise for me, it's too management intensive. <laughs> sure. That makes sense. Well, it's good of you to join us. Uh, this, um, uh, Tad and I will, will be handling this interview, but, um, uh, you know, the, the fruits of it will uh, be seen in, in all of the markets that we just mentioned. Awesome. Um, Great. So uh, we're curious uh, how hard you tried, or if at all, to win any support from the Democratic establishment before you launched this campaign. Uh, you know, we, we've talked to a lot of folks in the Democratic establishment, and it, what's pretty incredible is almost all of them that we talk to uh, privately say they are voting for a backup candidate. But they can't be public about that or they can't be too overtly public about that because they don't want to come across as being anti-party. And that's because Gavin Newsom and the Democratic Party have taken this vote no on recall, leave the second question blank, which A, is stupid. B, it's selfish. Uh, it's, and, and, and it's quite frankly, it's undemocratic. But, uh, you know, that's that's the strategy they've, they've stood by. So, yeah, it's been a little bit diff more difficult getting sort of overt uh, support, but uh, that's okay. We we think uh, we haven't had any issues uh, operating our campaign, so uh, it's been great. And so we get we get advice in the background. <laughs> was the debate last night? Was it in Sacramento or or? Uh, yep, Sacramento KCRA three uh, right at their studio. Yeah, that's what I, I gathered. Um, are you already home? Oh yeah, yeah. We flew there uh, and then flew back <laughs> right after. Okay, what's your assessment? of how it went last night at the debate. I think it went wonderfully. I, I mean, there's uh, there's very little, if anything, I could critique myself on. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I'm not trying to just pat myself on the back, but uh, for our first debate, I think, uh, and our first sort of public showing uh, against other candidates, I think uh, we, we really got our message across that this is not a Republican recall. People should vote on a moderate JFK style Democrat who's going to bring big change and bold change to California, which is what we need because we've got major issues, especially our water crisis. You know, I don't think, I don't think the rest of the country even recognizes how bad our water crisis is, yet we supply a whole lot of their food. Uh, so uh, I, I think there's some national educating to be done on how important our water crisis is. You know, you seem very fun and loose <laughs> um, in your YouTube videos and, um, you know, happy, even affable. Um, it, last night of the debate, I didn't see that guy. I saw a pretty intense, yep, even maybe anxious, maybe um, combative. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, uh, pe people. So, so, so why, why the difference? Who are we going to get if we get a governor? Is this going to be Mister Intense all the time, or <laughs> no? No. Know, look, here's that... here's the thing. Uh, I am fighting. A, uh, a, a sort of branding uh, by almost all media that I'm just some YouTuber and that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm someone who's uh, just an entertainer or someone who's a prankster or whatever, which is first, first of all, totally wrong. I'm more of a CNBC Bloomberg style. I don't do pranks, uh, you know, a long time ago, maybe, but, but now for years, it's just straight finance, uh, wealth building, education. Uh, and, and, and just facts, talking about facts. Uh, so yes, uh, you know, and, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm very casual on my videos and very, uh, in, in most of my videos, it's very uh, just uh, happy uh, to, to help folks and, and I like what I'm doing. But because of this branding, if I go on uh, my first debate and I'm Mr. Smiles and I'm Mr., uh, Mr. YouTube, hey, let's all take a selfie together or whatever, 
then uh, then then that branding stays that oh this must just be some unserious candidate who wants to keep perpetuating their channel or that. So we had to make the the decision to uh, come into this debate prepared to go on a strong offense uh, against everyone. Uh, quite frankly, the other candidates on the stage, the candidates who weren't there, uh, to some limited degree, Gavin Newsom, even though we're from the same party, because we, we need people to know that the problems we have are massive and we need big change for that. And we need a serious candidate for that. So I, I can't be Mr. Happy Smiles on a debate stage. All right. That's a, that's a decent uh, answer, I would say. Um, but I, I don't agree that you were perfect in that debate. Um, oh, I certainly was not perfect. <laughs> nobody is going to fault you for, can, you know, quickly confusing the number of children you have with their ages. Uh, you <laughs> yourself and corrected yourself very quickly, and there's no problem with that. But twice you referred to the state legislature as Congress. Yeah, I, if that's the worst you know, thing I got, big deal. It was sure it was twice, but it was in the same. Uh, it was in the same paragraph. We uh, look. I know it's the legislature. I know we have the assembly and senate. The problem is, at almost every day, I'm talking about our national congress because we're always talking about Nancy Pelosi and the darn infrastructure package. So it's just ingrained in me. I feel like for the last 18 months, I've been doing nothing but talking about Congress and stimulus and and what's going on in national politics. Uh, especially with with uh, how tight the election was on January 5th for the uh, Georgia seat to to get that Democratic control in uh, in the Senate. So, look, yeah, I have way more, way more. Uh, I've spent way more time talking about our National Congress over the last 18 months than I have our state legislature. So, look, faux pop. Who cares if that's the if that's the worst thing, that's the worst people are gonna say I I will take that any day and people know what I mean too so it's like let's be real let's get over it. <laughs> you are a lot more fun in person I will tell you that uh, and, and you. probably that's what people tell you maybe this is a guy you want to have a beer with as they say. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> um, you. Uh, you, you must have taken some offense at the things that Falconer was saying about, uh, you know, a, a, a test drive a governor. Um, it, it, does that, uh, it, were you, I guess that probably didn't surprise you, huh? Like, what else are they going to say about me? <laughs> that's, that's all they got, man. That's all they got. That's all they have is, oh, here's someone who hasn't been in politics before. The last thing we needed is, is another politician. That's why I opened up with definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. We keep electing politicians with political experience in California. We end up getting poor leadership and nothing changes. Uh, and, and so that's why I'm running. Um, let me jump in here, Garth, and follow up on what Kevin just said. Kevin, nice to meet you. Pleasure, yep. There is, I think, a value to someone who has done some elected service from the standpoint of um, maybe facing some opposition while in office, and learning to work with opposition, uh, certainly not demonizing opposition. Sure. Um, going through that experience and that exposure. Uh, you haven't done that yet. And um, I think uh, being quite candid, if you were elected governor, uh, some of your fellow Democrats in the legislature would be sharpening their knives and trying to get you to you know, embrace their agendas. So talk about how you would remain your own person, but you would play the political game because you have yeah, to look, do that. I, I learned negotiations in law enforcement, uh, de-escalation, uh, trying to get people to take guns off of their head or somebody else's head. Uh, and, and I took those skills into real estate negotiations, investing negotiations, and people negotiations. Politics is no more than negotiations. This is exactly why we can't have somebody like a Larry Elder come in who's just going to say, I'm going to go in and undo everything day one, and I'm going to throw around the furniture and veto anything that Democrats try to do. The knives are going to be sharp from everyone in the legislature if somebody comes in like that. You have to respect the legislature, and you have to respect that all of the people in our legislature are trying to do good. Everybody has different opinions about how that good should, should be done, but- we all have the same goal of doing something good. And I think with the supermajority that the legislature has, uh, the realizations of the problems that we have, 
but together under a strong leader, we can affect massive change. And so my specific plan is first dealing with homelessness. So that way after 60 days, we don't have homeless dying on our streets anymore. Then I move on to the second part, which is where I work with the legislature on the massive issues that we have, like schools and housing and crime. We're going to we're gonna have to work together on this. We're going to have to, same thing with water and fire. We're going to have to work together on a massive uh, infrastructure package on all these, uh, these issues here. I'm not going to get everything I want. They're not going to get everything they want. Uh, but the goal is to come out year one with a much improved California than we've ever seen before. But, but the last guy that I recall that really branded himself as a master negotiator um, came our president. And I don't know, did, did you think he was a good president? <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> uh, Donald Trump did the same thing I just described to you about Larry Elder, which was go in, start undoing things and throw around the furniture. I don't think that works in California. Uh, I, I don't really care about the federal office or, or the past. Uh, I just know that you can't go in and day one start offending the legislature. You have to respect them and you have to work with them. You have to hear them out. I, I don't mind sitting down with every single one of them individually for dinner to figure out or dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever. I got to work fast. Got only a five week transition period uh, You know, if voters elect us. Uh, so there's a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong. A lot of work to do. But I'm willing to put that work in and make sure we can negotiate win-win deals. Um, I guess I'd like to hear a little bit more of your thoughts about Larry Elder. Uh, he is. Uh, I, what's the, what's the, your latest poll? In to, is he is he on top? Well, the latest two polls in August. Uh, the first one has me beating him, twenty-seven to twenty-three. The second one had me at 13 and him at like 21 or 22 or something like that. Maybe it was 23 even. So he, he had the second, the CBS poll, he, he pulled better than I did, but it's not even close compared to the other candidates. I mean, the people I was debating with yesterday, was, I, I pull higher than all three of them combined in those last two polls. But uh, yeah, look, I just don't think Larry Elder is going to be able to get anything done. Uh, and that's my biggest concern is that we're going to have a lame duck governor for a year. Now, Larry Elder says, oh, well, I'll be able to veto things and I'll be able to make appointments and I'll be able to use executive action. I don't think he understands that, first of all, we've never had a 75% supermajority before uh, in the history of California. And this is a massive supermajority. And not only that, but the legislature has the power to undo or delay your appointments, to undo your executive action and to override all of your vetoes. I would expect, and this is actually part of the reason why I think the Democratic establishment is saying no on recall, is because if a Republican wins, I think the Democratic Party is, is secretly thinking to themselves, and it's somewhat sabotage because it's gambling with people's lives for a year. I think they're thinking in the background, ah, worst case, the legislature will run uh, uh, the government uh, for a year. Then we'll be able to campaign in 2022 showing, look, you had a Republican governor for a year. He literally got nothing done. It was an abject failure. Bring back a Democrat so we can finally have big solutions or whatever. And now <laughs> you actually end up solidifying the Democrats, uh, Democrats power in California because it's like, ah, you had your Republican flavor for a year. It didn't work out. I think that's wrong. I think it's petty. Uh, but, but, you know, <laughs> I think that's the reality. So I'm running as somebody who, who just wants to solve Californian problems not Republican issues, not Democratic issues, just down the middle, California issues. Okay, <clears throat> so on uh, springboarding off of that last point, we do have a proposal for a water supply solution, which is the pipeline to Mississippi, to yep. the Mississippi River. And um, that obviously is a beyond California impact. Oh yeah. So, you know, I don't think I could build a pipeline across the street to my neighbor's house <laughs> without either being sued or all kinds of permits or blah, 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 right? How in the world do you think you could feasibly get a pipeline to the Mississippi River in all due respect? Joe Biden knows how important California's agricultural region is. California knows that 50% of our farms are brown because we don't have enough water. It's not because we have bad farmers. We've got great farmers, but we just don't have enough water. And we keep talking about water restrictions and more conservation. Uh, Gavin Newsom says, take shorter showers. It's nuts. We need to go all in. 
And whether that's desalination, whether that's uh, dams, whatever, or, or building our pipeline, we need big action. And so I want to negotiate that with Joe Biden, uh, the governors along the way. I believe Arizona, New Mexico would contribute uh, to our cost to build. We lease lands where we need to, let's say from Texas, and we buy water. We pump it over. It'll take 11 power plants. And uh, now we double the flow of water to the Colorado River. And, and now we start actually alleviating the massive crises that we have in California one at a time. Is it correct to assume that your base is mostly young people? Um, it, it, it seems that, that you really appeal to to younger voters and, and the, the, the rising generation. Are, are you doing much to reach out to, to older people like me and Ted? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we're doing everything we can to reach out to everyone. Uh, yeah, look, the, the, my YouTube audience, if you're referring to that, is, is mostly between 25 and 45. Sort of a bell curve between there, I'd say the middle's around 35. The millennial generation is the biggest voting generation we have. Uh, we just need turnout. Uh, and so there's a lot of work to do with turnout, but then also outreach to other generations. Uh, and so uh, other generations are on social media. So texting surprisingly can do well. Uh, TV ads, radio, uh, the debate. These are great ways to reach out to another base, but also working with our, our existing base to make sure that they do everything they can to talk to older generations because we, we don't have the money to spend like Gavin Newsom does, but we do have what Gavin Newsom doesn't have, uh, at least I believe, and, and that's a massive social support. I, we, you're not wrong that that turnout is going to be very important. Our, our look at, at the numbers suggests yeah. that although uh, young people really like you, young people have not cast their ballots yet. Um, yeah. There's a lot of young voters out there that are just sitting on their hands or just waiting. I don't know. I, I, so you're trying to reach them. Uh, what can you do to get out the vote? Well, I, I expect uh, the younger voters likely to vote closer to the election in person. Uh, so that's uh, that's our expectation. But yeah, look, uh, we, we've got to make sure we, uh, we we pitch, get out and vote as much as possible. So that, that'll be a big priority. Okay, another constituency, obviously, is the Republicans. Now, they're not, there aren't nearly as many Republicans as there used to be in California, but how, how do you reach any of them with so many Republican candidates running against you? Do, do you, do you to capture any Republicans? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, we get donations from Republicans. We get a lot of support from Republicans. And, and that's because Republicans aren't dramatically different from Democrats. They, they want common sense. They want solutions and they want to see change in California. Uh, a lot of frustration has driven them to the, the antics of, of Larry Elder. But as they recognize the challenges that somebody like Larry Elder would face, a lot of folks who were Larry Elder supporters are supporting us. And so we think we can get support from three angles. Democrats who vote yes on recall, Democrats who vote no on recall, and Republicans who want to see something get done. Another slice of the electorate is the Valley, the, the San Joaquin Sacramento Valley. Yeah. And so here you are, Kevin from Ventura County. Yeah. You know, some folks over here are going to say, here comes a Democrat from the coast. All the coastal people think they're elite. We're so different here in the Valley. The Valley does still retain some strong Republican registration. How do you sell yourself to Valley voters? Our 20 point plan is so in the middle and the biggest sales uh, that, that we look for is making sure that we can respect our natural gas and our fracking industry by, at the same time as we focus on climate change, we simplify some of the insane regulations that we have that actually make it harder to be green. For example, some of our climate regulations don't allow our natural gas uh, infrastructure to improve their infrastructure. We could make some of our natural gas infrastructure eight times more efficient today, but we don't because it's not 100% green. There, there's a lack of common sense at, at, at a lot of regulations and rules that we have. And the problem is we've never had a governor, at least I believe, who, who has looked at the problems we have in California holistically. So we have a climate change issue. Okay, let's build. And we also have a housing issue. 
and a homeless issue because of the housing issue. Well, then let's build hundreds of thousands of new homes. Around them, let's build solar and wind farms. But now that we're improving climate change, let's also make sure that we're simplifying some of the regulations that can positively affect climate change while we're working on that transition. Uh, and that's much like the natural gas solution I talked about. There's a lot of work to do with all of this, a lot of negotiation to do at every level of this. I'm ready to do it. I don't know that it's, I, I mean, it's not a secret um, that uh, your parents are immigrants from, from Europe, um, but it's- Oh my. Um, and so are you. Uh, are, are you a naturalized citizen? I guess I should ask. Yes. When, when did that happen? 2011. Okay. Do, do, does your background inform your views on immigration at all? And, and what are your views on immigration? Uh, well, um, I think we should have streamlined legal immigration. I, I think the reason we have refugees coming to the border is because, you know, people who are educated, people who have businesses and skills don't want to risk their lives to come here. So the only immigration it feels like we have are, are refugees. And so I think we need to create an opportunity for that architect or that engineer or that electrician in Brazil to be able to come here and work. If, if somebody can say, hey, look, I can come to California and I can work, there should be a streamlined immigration option for them. Uh, so that way, if they can say, look, I, I don't need to take, I can give to, to the economy. I just need papers. Well, golly, we shouldn't stand in that way. We should be inviting people to California, not driving people out of California. But of course, we got to solve all of our major issues too. Uh, you know, we've got to solve the housing crisis. Uh, we we got to solve the homeless crisis and the crime crisis, but we can do that. We can do all these things together at the same time. Uh, but yeah, look, I'm a big fan of, of faster streamlined legal immigration. And I think it'll put a massive dent into our illegal immigration problem or undocumented problem. Back to Valley and conservative voters. Um, we should probably uh, let you uh, have a chance to talk about your uh, views on gun legislation. Sure. Uh, would, would you just briefly do that, please? Yeah, yeah. So I'll uh, try to keep it brief. Basically, gun violence uh, has massive and, and multivaried causes. Uh, depression, mistrust, economic reasons, job loss, familial issues, whatever. Uh, yet we don't teach mental education in our schools. We have a horrible mental health infrastructure. We have a horrible economic structure that perpetuates poverty and mistrust. And so my plan addresses those big un underlying issues. And I believe un addressing those underlying issues will actually help us reduce gun violence. See, I don't believe, and statistically I'm right, that criminals use California compliant weapons or California rostered handguns. So I'm not for these sorts of gun controls because statistically, every time we talk about gun controls, gun sales skyrocket and Californians are achieving the opposite of what they want. So I'm, I'm for solving the big problems that actually lead to gun violence and then slowly rolling back some of the nonsensical regulations that we have on guns that, uh, that, that just lead to illegal importing of guns from other states or, or whatever. Uh, and, and again, statistically, uh, it, things like a uh, high capacity magazine ban has, has not reduced crime. It hasn't reduced shootings. And again, criminals have plenty of access to high capacity magazines anyway. So, uh, and this is, this is all, you know, research, this, this easy research to Google even. So for me, we're not going to be able to get California from where it is all the way to Second Amendment like Texas. Uh, but I do think that uh, once we solve some of the more major issues, there should be some negotiated loosening of some of the overbearing restrictions. Kevin, tell us about um, your campaign plans here in the final weeks. Are you going to be making stops in the Valley at all? Yeah, we were just there uh, actually uh, on, uh, on Saturday. We, uh, we went to uh, Fresno Bakersfield. And uh, that was right after San Francisco and uh, Sacramento. Uh, and uh, we, we, we talked with voters. The big thing is, is talking with voters to understand what their problems are, what local initiatives are standing in, your, in their way. Uh, a lot of talk about water restrictions and, and metering farm water. I mean, there, there's so many, so many small ideas uh, and, and, they, and they just bother me. We need big ideas. And that's why I'm running for governor. Uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, plans, We've got a lot of things sort of on, on, uh, on, on our hit list of uh, what we wanna do. Our big thing was this debate. 
And so we, over the next two days, we're going to plan uh, exactly how we want to finish out the next uh, two and a half weeks, what kind of ads we want to do radio. And we're building that off of the debate because I, I don't think there's going to be another debate. So we're going to build our, our next moves off of uh, the success of the debate. Okay. Yeah, and I, I guess I struggle a bit with the idea that um, that you have shown a lot of disdain for the governor, who really is the leader of the Democratic Party in, in California, and and how you expect to win over people when you've uh, you know uh, disrespected their leader. Um, it, I don't think anybody really respects Gavin Newsom. I think. Uh, uh, I, I think they, they kind of have to play along to not get their head chopped off. Uh, but uh, once once the uh, once the problem goes away, I think there'll be a weight lifted off a lot of folks shoulders and uh, we'll actually be able to make big change happen. And look, I, I know that's that's uh, very critical of Governor Newsom, but I can't stand somebody who who's willing to lie to Californians and then try to cover it up. And it's not just once, it's many times overstating fire prevention by 690 percent. Then getting after getting exposed by NPR for overseeing fire prevention by 690% uh, tries to cover it up. This administration tried to remove evidence that they ever made the uh, claims that they made, which is unacceptable. Now, he tells us we have a $5.2 billion surplus for rent relief because we're roaring back. California is doing so well. He doesn't understand that we had a one-time boom in SPAC IPOs and IPOs. That money is not going to be here again next year. And that $5.2 billion didn't come because California is roaring back. $4.8 billion of it, or over 92%, came from Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And at that, this $5.2 billion is sitting around while people are desperate to make their rental payments, to get the rent relief they were promised from Congress. And yet Gavin Newsom's only distributed 6% of the money. It's a crime. You know, he went into office saying he was going to end the high-speed rail. Now he loves the high-speed rail. <laughs> it's 71-year break even on the project. It's stupid. You know, if we waived the high, got rid of the high-speed rail, and if we had complete control of that money, because I know we don't, we have to deal with Biden on this, we could waive income taxes on anyone making under two hundred fifty thousand dollars for three years. It's it's such an abject waste of money. Should be investing in our schools instead. So look, there are a lot of things that really frustrate me about Gavin Newsom. Uh, you know, donations from Netflix in exchange for we get to stay open during the pandemic while one third of California's businesses are going bankrupt. Donations from Google, feud, the, and, and this is all research. I can send you this stuff. Donations, a $7 million donation from Google. A few days later, uh, Gavin Newsom signs a tens of millions of dollar no-bid contract with Google. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, it's so wrong. Uh, and so we got to bring transparency to government. We need a new leader. All right, we're up against uh, the end of our, of our agreed time. Um, we'd like to just give you a minute to say what your main message is to voters, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, the number one thing is do not leave the second part of the ballot blank. Pick the best backup option. My complete plan is at meetkevin.com. I'm running as a JFK-style Democrat because I am. I have nightmares that in 20 years, my three- and five-year-old are going to ask me, Dad, why did you raise in California? The state's bankrupt, or nearly bankrupt in 20 years from now. If we stay on this path, we will be. Uh, why didn't we move to Texas or Florida? And that devastates me. I, I don't want to stand in front of my children and have to say, sorry, I raised you in a failed state. And right now we're on the path towards failure. Uh, just We just have to look around and, and we know this. It's almost like during the pandemic, we had our heads down and we were working taxpayers. And now we look up, we're like, wait a minute, people are dying on the street. We have a housing crisis, a crime crisis, and no real plans to solve them from any other candidate. And a Republican certainly isn't going to get anything done with this supermajority of Democrats. So I believe I'm the best option uh, with my full actual plan outlined at meetkevin.com for exactly how we're going to fix California.